Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. Welcome to another video for League of Legends. In this video, we're going to be looking at Aurelian Soul as played by XPL. This is from a replay he sent me. I don't know if it's a normal game or a ranked game, but this is from some kind of solo queue event since this is not made up of people that XPL knows in the game. Aurelian Soul is a champion who doesn't see a whole lot of play. He's a relatively uncommon champ. He, I believe he's among the like, 10 to 15 least played champions in League of Legends. Actually is pretty strong right now. I, I took a look at his win rate and his win rate's up around 55%, which is quite high. Granted, there's only a small number of people playing him, so it seems like Aurelian Soul is a champion that's played by a small number of people but the number of people who have put in the time and have kind of mastered this champion tend to do quite well with him. So what is Aurelian Soul? Well, he's basically a giant flying magical Chinese dragon. <laughs> he was teased a long time before he was actually released. I can't recall, he had another name initially, and this champion was in development for like two years because, it's, well, it's more complicated than your typical champion goes. And this champion has had so many bugs over the years, it's almost ridiculous. He's been uh, kind of taken out of competitive play a whole bunch of times because there have been bug after bug after bug associated with Aurelian Soul. But uh, he's quite unique. He has his own gameplay style. It's based around the use of these flying uh, magical stars that orbit him. What's the term? Stars, I guess they're called. These projectiles that go around Aurelian Soul and are kind of fundamental to his gameplay. Basically, Aurelian Soul is not a burst caster, he is a damage over time caster. The idea is that the stars will rotate and they'll deal damage over time. And the longer a fight goes, as long as he can keep damaging people with his stars, the more damage he'll be able to output. So we're going to see this in this, uh, we're going to see some Aurelian Soul gameplay in this match as played by XPL. I'm going to take a quick look up at the matchup. So up in top lane, we're going to have Renekton against Jax. That's a matchup where Renekton wins early and Jax eventually takes over and wins late with his scaling. In the jungle, we're going to have a Shaco against a Pantheon. Two junglers that are both pretty early game focused. And in the bottom lane, it's going to be this Ezreal Braum lane against a Rakan and Soraka lane. Or Zaya, excuse me, not Rakan, Zaya, the other one of the two lovers, Zaya and uh, Soraka. So up in top lane is actually a really early first blood by the Renekton player, but then he gets popped by uh, the jungle pantheon, so it turns into a one for one. But that's still good that Renekton gets first blood against Jax. If that goes the other way, it's likely to be a long match for the Renekton, let's just put it that way. All right, our featured folk matchup is here in mid between the uh, between the Aurelian Soul, is played by XPL, and against this Silas player. So we're going to get to see more Silas gameplay, which is going to be fun as well, since he's also a new champion as I record this video. I'm going to highlight first the passive here. You probably have noticed this already, but Aurelian Soul's passive is center of the universe. Stars orbit Aurelian Soul, deal magic damage when they hit an enemy. It's a little tricky because it's unfortunate the passive doesn't tell you how much damage the stars are doing just when you highlight it, but that's his passive, stars orbit him. We'll have time to look at his other skills in a minute because we've got kind of a fight going on over this scuttle crab. So Shiko is invading the enemy team's jungle. He's going to get exhausted. Braum is roaming up from bot lane. Both supports are in action here. Now Soraka is going to flash away. She got ignited. Meanwhile, XP is chasing after the Silas, who's run himself out of mana. Let's see, if Braum can hit a Q, he can get this kill on Soraka. Can he hit it? Nope, he's going to miss. Meanwhile, over here, XPL is going to ignite, and that's going to be enough to finish off the kill on Silas. So, one for zero in favor of XPL's team. And meanwhile, the Ezreal player is looking to chase this down again. Soraka's out of mana, but she has made it back to her tower, so it looks like that's all we're going to see from that. And meanwhile, now the Pantheon jungler is coming in. He does have double buff, so XPL has got to skedaddle out of here. But he was able to claim a kill there on Silas and also deny a fair amount of farm to Silas because, granted, while the jungle Pantheon's picking this up, Silas is not getting it, and that's going to put him behind him. In fact, the, the blue buff invade continues. I'm not exactly sure what the Ezreal and the Braum are doing this deep in the enemy jungle. But Ezreal is not where he wants to be, and oh boy, that's not good. That's going to feed a kill right back to the Silas player. So he ends up getting a kill out of it as well, and that's going to even up this mid lane a bit. All right, we mentioned the stars. Stars orbit around Aurelian Soul. What else do we have to talk about? Well, let's look at his skill, shall we? And I'm going to start by talking about his W, because this is kind of the core skill on Aurelian Soul. Celestial Expansion has an initial mana cost, 40 mana, and then costs 24 mana per second to keep it going. There's a passive, increases the star's base damage, and since the stars are so integral to, X to the Aurelian Soul gameplay, you can see why this would be the skill you max first, which is what XPL is doing. He put a point in all three of his skills, and then he's maxing the W first. 
So it increases the star base damage, and then you can toggle it to cause the stars to orbit at a greater range, what's called the outer limit, and they deal 150% damage for a total of, you can see, 59 plus 10, so there's AP scaling on this. So the way that this works is you can toggle it, there it is right there, toggle the stars, cause them to orbit at a, a greater distance, they also orbit faster, super good for wave clear. And let's just check in on the top lane here. The Renekton player was trying to get a kill on Jax, didn't get it, and then he got jumped on and killed. So this is really core to the gameplay for Aurelian Soul. He is not a duelist. He does not want to 1v1 enemy champions. That's not his focus. What he wants to do is he wants to use his stars for wave clear, clear waves really fast, punish enemy champions for leaving the lane and roaming, and alternately to shove out his own lane and then open up his own roaming plays. So your goal is not really, like I said, to duel with the enemy team. Your goal is to wave clear and then either punish the enemy champion for roaming, for leaving their lane, like this is what XPL is doing right now. He is punishing the Silas player for going up to top lane. And uh, granted, there was a kill up on the Redactive player up there, but look how much farm that Silas is losing here. This is quite a bit of minions that are being denied on the tower, and XPL was able to get one of the turret plates as well. So that's the whole idea. This is why XPL has is kind of set up the champion the way he did. Note that he started with a corruption potion because he wants to run the uh, the stars more often. Unfortunately, now he's getting jumped on by Silas, and that is the weakness of Aurelian Soul as a champion. Like I said, he is not a duelist. He is not good in 1v1. One of the things XPL has told me is that if an enemy champion can get inside the circling stars, then Aurelian Soul is quite vulnerable because he doesn't have much in the way of 1v1 presence. And if you're inside his stars, well, the stars deal most of the damage. If you get right on top of him, he can be pretty vulnerable. And uh, that's kind of the, like I said, it's kind of the weakness of this champion. All right, so XPL was able to pick up a bunch of farm. Well, again, watch how quickly he is able to kill these minions with his uh, with his W running. Yeah, they all go down pretty quickly. And now he's going to look to make a roaming play because Silas is going down the bot lane. So let's watch this. This is going to be the use of the E on Aurelian Soul, which we'll talk more about in a second. But there it is. He's going to pop his E, which allows him to fly over terrain. He's going to roam down here. He's going to toss out his Q, which is a stun. And he's going to pick up that kill on the Silas and even get a shutdown in the process. As meanwhile, there's a shutdown in top lane because it looks like Renekton was able to duel the Pantheon jungler as well. So let's talk about that skill, shall we? Just because it came into play there. This is his E, Comet of Legend. This is actually your one point skill. XPL put a point in it at level two, but he's going to max it last. There's a passive function, and this is why XPL put a point into it at level two. Passive continually moving in one direction grants increasing movement speed up to 25%. So yeah, uh, there is a short cooldown associated with getting that bonus movement speed. But uh, as long as you're moving in one direction, you get the bonus movement speed. There it is, it just kicked in. There's a small graphical effect, like a little trail running behind Aurelian Soul when this kicks in. So this is what helps him roam. When you keep moving in one direction, you get that passive movement speed bonus. There it is, just kicked in again. So look, see, here comes the movement speed. Goes all the way up to 471 movement speed with uh, only boots one, that's very fast. And again, allows him to roam, allows him to make plays. Then there's the active function, fly for 3,000 units in the chosen direction, only castable outside of combat. So you, again, need to be, can't have uh, dealt damage or taken damage, I think for, I think it's like about five or six seconds in order to trigger this. Fly for 3,000 units, a really soul can see and be seen over walls while flying. Taking champion or turret damage will force the landing and reset the passive movement speed. Again, this is all kind of core to his gameplay. And there it is again, gonna fly over the wall, looking to get into a play here. So Pantheon was invading. It looks like he stole the blue buff, I think, but now our, uh, XPL is able to get in range and look to punish him. Again, look at the damage the stars are doing. It's gonna, kill's gonna be finished off by Redactin, but those stars ticking, 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 ticking while that W's on. And here comes Silas, wants to pick a fight, but it turns out that the Shaco player is here too, so this is a 2v1. We're gonna see the ultimate use there, which I'll talk more about in a minute, but Silas is gonna flash after, and he is gonna pick up that kill. So flash for a flash, but it turns out XPL, or XPL does end up losing that, and like I said, the early insult, not a great champion as a duelist. Yep, here comes Silas again, getting a land. His uh, chain toss in. Jax is gonna be here as well. He's gonna get the Counter-Strike stun, and that's gonna be enough to pick up a kill on the Sheko player. So overall, that trade did not go great. They got the initial kill on Pantheon, but we're not able to get any of the follow-up kills. And so it ends up being a two for one in the enemy team's favor there. I mentioned the Q or the W and the E, so like I said, we covered the W first. This is being maxed faster. I should also mention that more points in W lowers the skill, lowers the cooldown on the skill. Here, XPL is 
going in with his Q as well. He was able to use the movement speed bonus there. He uses his ultimate. The ultimate is a slow. Again, we'll talk more about that in a minute. And again, has that passive movement speed bonus. Look at that extra speed ticking up. So there's really no way for Silas to escape. And that's going to be a relatively easy kill for XBL to pick up. Now, he is going to get jumped on by the bottom lane here. So he needs to try to escape this. He's got the stars running for the bonus damage. But now that passive movement speed kicks in again. As long as he keeps moving in the same direction, he picks that up. And XPO is able to escape out of this without dying, even though he did not have flash up. So nicely done there. He could not use his, uh, his E because it was on cooldown. This skill has an extremely long cooldown, 60 seconds. The passive movement speed you can still get even when the active function is on cooldown, which is nice. But keep that in mind, this is on an extremely long cooldown. Alright, let's look at the Q skill next. I haven't had a chance to talk about that. This is Star Surge. 10 second cooldown. This does not go down with more points in the skill. It's always a 10 second cooldown. Of course, CDR applies, but the skilling it does not give you a lower cooldown. All right, first press, early and soul creates a new stellar core, grows over time, grants him 10% movement speed. So again, more movement speed. This guy's, this is why this champion's all about roaming. The core will detonate when it reaches his outer limit, applies magic damage, and stuns enemies. So there it is. There's the, the use of the Q right there. You see the stun going off. And meanwhile, XPL now wants to get away from this. He does not have his ult up, so he is going to run his W to get the additional damage. And we're going to see the tower comes in. Another great Q. Note that the stun was very low because it was at such short range. And he's actually going to pick up a kill on Pantheon there. So really nicely done. Meanwhile, Silas has stolen the Shaco ultimate. So we have double Silas's here. And that's pretty funny. Uh, Silas is unfortunately out of mana right now. So he can't really use too many more of his abilities. So XPL looking to get back in this fight. Shaco is still... Still coming after him, but I think that's going to be it for this one. And here again, note the immense wave clear when the W is popped and those stars are running. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the Q because we didn't have an opportunity to do that. Again, the stun, basically, he creates this stellar core. It detonates at the outer limit, so that's, again, the range at which these things are going up. There it is. It's going to go off right there. He's actually going to miss it right there, but then Silas misses the chain toss. Ignite's going to be popped. And that is going to be enough to get this kill. So a little bit funny there. XPL misses his Q, misses his ultimate, but he just ignites and then allows his uh, stars to do enough damage, and that does get the kill on Silas. So, so yeah, not the flashiest kill, but hey, if it works, it works. Anyways, I was trying to say, so the Q will detonate at his outer limit. Again, that's the extended star range. So it looks like it's about maybe 600 range, roughly, from away from the center of Aurelian Soul. 600, 650 range, something like that. So the Q will detonate when it hits that range. However, you can keep moving in the same direction that you fired your Q. And this will cause it to just keep traveling until it hits that outer limit. Uh, and it will keep growing over time as it does this. So you can have these examples of where Aurelian Soul will fire off his Q and then just follow his Q and it won't detonate because again, it hasn't hit the outer limit yet and it just grows larger and larger and larger over time. And the further it travels, the greater the stun is. So when XPL used his stun defensively right here under the turret, it was very short duration. It did not stun for very long because he just did, used it as like a point blank stun. And uh, when his stun, when his Q travels for longer, you get the longer stun duration. Note that the stun duration does go up with more points in the skill. Uh, it starts at a half second minimum, and then it, now it's at 0.6 second minimum because he's got a second point. So you skill the W first because this is your main damage, increases the star base damage, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you skill the Q second because although it doesn't drop the cooldown of the skill, it does increase the stun duration. All right, so that covers most of his skills. We just got to talk about his ults, which I'll try to get to next. It's been a fairly action-filled uh, game so far. All right, so Pantheon's going to look to ult in here, and we're going to see Pantheon jump on top of XPL, so he gets low. He actually misses his Q right there, so that stun doesn't work, but uses the ultimate for the knockback, and then is going to continue to use the stun there. It gets off a good second stun right there. Pantheon's going to flash for the Spear Toss, but it's not quite enough. XPL is still alive has done a really nice job of getting out of this. So on 100 health or so, he's going to have just enough to escape. And now with Shaco in the area, maybe can look to try to make a play. Ultimately does not end up doing so. Now, unfortunately for his team, the bot lane is not going well. Israel is 040 and Zaya is 302. So yeah, their bot lane is 07 right now and getting pretty thoroughly beaten down by the Zaya player. So this is going to be a problem later on. This, the fact that Zaya is this strong so that's going to have to be an issue later on. And uh, because their bot lane is so far behind, the red team is also taking this Mountain Drake right here. So let's see. Oh, and Zaya, ooh, not quite able to finish that off. But Ezreal, you probably should just base, buddy, because you're on 100 health, and that is not safe. 
and the enemy team takes the Mountain Drake. Overall, XPL's team is slightly ahead, and most of their lead is in that top lane. Note that Renekton is like 3,000 gold ahead of the Jax player. XPL is also a little bit ahead in mid, but it's reasonably close there. Meanwhile, he's going to get jumped on by Jax, but Jax misses the Counter-Strike. Not quite enough. XPL is able to escape out of that one. Now, we haven't talked about the ult yet, so let me just highlight this. Ultimate, Voice of Light. Breeze out a blast of pure starfire, deals magic damage, and slows by two seconds. The blast will also knock nearby enemies back to Aurelian Soul's outer limit. So deals magic damage and slows. The more significant thing on the ult, though, is the knockback. It will push enemies back to the outer limit. Remember how I said that Aurelian Soul is not a great duelist? He doesn't want people to get right on top of him. I mean, look, even right here, when the minions are inside his stars, he actually has trouble killing them. So you don't want people to be inside your stars. That's kind of the whole idea. You want them out at the range at which your stars are orbiting, preferably at the outer limit, because that's where your stars are doing the most damage when you've got that W popped. And your ult allows you to knock them back to, the, to that outer limit range. So it's a way of getting people away from being right on top of Aurelian Soul, which is what you want. Now up here, there's a duel going on with Silas and with the Renekton player. Now the Q misses, but that time XBL did hit on his ultimate, and he got that 50% slow on there. Uh, Voice of Light starts at 40% at rank 1, goes up to 50% at rank 2, goes to 60% at rank 3. So the slow does increase with more points in the skill. Um, his ult is not that great. I mean, it, it's not bad or anything, don't get me wrong, but it's not a great ultimate. The big thing is you use it to shove people back so that they're not right up in your face, and so that you can push them back to that outer limit range and get the stars to just keep orbiting and dealing damage. So like right here, we're going to see the, uh, the, the Jax player jump in, hit his Counter-Strike, and now Pantheon's joined the fight as well. So XPL needs to get out of here. Can he manage to escape this? We're going to see Jax jump on him, but hits a point blank stun on the Q. That's going to get Jax off of him. Now Shaco's going back in, but oops, uh, Pantheon does have a lot of burst damage. And we see that there as Shaco just gets popped instantly. So not the worst idea, but that, that did not work out in the end. And Red Team is actually... Been picking up a decent number of kills here, a lot of them in the bot lane, where again, the Zaya player is really starting to snowball ahead, has finished that Infinity Edge. In terms of gold, is about a thousand gold ahead of, of, of uh, Ezreal, and it's worse than that because Ezreal does have Kleptomancy. So Ezreal's, um, basically his Keystone Mastery is he gets more gold, and he's still behind in gold despite that. Also note that Silas has picked up the Braum ultimate, which is a pretty good one to steal overall. Unfortunately, Braum misses his Q, so not going to get that slow. Uh, they are able to push back the red team's attack on this turret for right now. One thing I should mention, Aurelian Soul, again, great wave clear, really good at stopping turret pushes, and uh, that's going to help them get off this tower. But Aurelian Soul, extremely mana-hungry while he has that W running. And now Ezreal's been caught out. Gonna get knocked up with the stolen Braum ultimate. He's gonna flash away, but as soon as that, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, as soon as the E chain toss is up, as soon as the uh, Silas player is gonna be able to go back in with his abscond of duck, Ezreal's gonna die, and indeed, he did die. So that's not great. Now Zaya's gonna ult it. She's gonna pick up one kill. She goes to 502 on the match. And at this point, there's not a lot that XPL can do. He's gonna look to try to just wave clear as best he can. He actually gets rooted there for a second by Zaya. But he can't manage to clear these many minions, so that tower is going to go down. And there's not much they can do other than just look to uh, clear the remaining minions, stop them from pushing on a second turret. Yeah, you can see the pings on the side lanes from red team. So they're going to look to fan out and look to grab those side lanes. It is a pretty close game right now. 31.2k, 31k. If anything, I'd say red team is slightly ahead because they have the fed Zaya. And they also picked up the first dragon, which is pretty nice. And, like, XPL wants to clear this ward here, but he just, he can't do it because Zaya's right there, and Zaya has too much damage. So, like I said, close game right now, and it's going to come down to who can make more plays in kind of the middle stages of the game. All right, so there's the Q going to come out, just misses that. Did not hit on the, what is it, Star Surge? Did not hit that, but Z again, the, the Silas player has run himself out of mana, so a nice ultimate from Braum. And, ooh, right there, though, we're going to see the Soraka ultimate. And that will be a problem in this game, because throughout the game, they're going to have to deal with the Soraka heals, and of course also the healing on the Kingslayer on Silas. Between the two of them, it's quite a bit of healing. So they're going to need to think about getting some kind of healing debuff, whether that's uh, whether that's the uh, sort of the... Oh, jeez. The Executioner's Calling, which is the AD item that does it, or Morella Namakon, which is the caster item that does that. And here, Pantheon's going to get a nice ult. We're going to see Jax jump on top of XPL, and then Pantheon jump on top, and that's exactly the situation that Aurelian Soul does not want, because, as I mentioned, 
If you get on top of Hurlian Soul and you get onto him inside his star range, he's pretty vulnerable. So now they're continuing to chase down the fight, going after Braum. Braum's going to hit the Blast Cone to try to escape, but yeah, there's a Pantheon right here. And it turns out Soraka's going to take that kill, so hey, why not? Use the Soraka, what's the, the Equinox, apparently, is able to get that kill. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but it was, it was enough there. And meanwhile, in bot lane, Zaya's gonna win a 1v1 with Ezreal. So, Zaya goes to 602, Ezreal's 05, Brahm is, uh, Ezreal's 07, Brahm is 05. So, um, my bot lane, <laughs> this is like, uh, what's wrong with my bot lane? Can you please, this is where people are typing in chat, please stop feeding. <laughs> So yeah, it's going to be up on the other lanes to carry this one because bot lane for XBL's team is really, really far behind. Also, a questionable call here from the red team. There's a Cloud Drake up right now. They should just go and claim this Cloud Drake. They just want to fight their, the uh, blue team is low and instead they're going to look to keep chasing this. And in fact, not the whole team can do it. It's mostly just going to be the Silas player. So this is pretty questionable to just have Silas and Soraka running in like this. Again, Zaya not here. She's back over here. So they're going to continue chasing. And again, they really should just be doing the Cloud Drake. But Renekton's going to look to engage. He's going to chase. Ezreal's going to get off a decent ultimate. We do see the Exhaust on Pantheon. Meanwhile, XPL does have a blue buff. And he's just running his E, the whole, or excuse me, running his W the whole time. And his stars are putting a lot of damage out. So right there, he is going to hit the stun on his Q. Gets that kill. Now now they pop the Guardian Angel on the Pantheon, and XPL just continuing to use those stars, and they deal a lot of damage. So a really bad overchase by the enemy team. They end up losing three people. They only get the Shaco, who is not really all that valuable. He's not a high priority target. And that's going to open up this dragon for XPL's team, which is really, really nice. Oh, and look at this. Jax is recalling. Going to take the, the E over the wall, and then use the ultimate, and then that plus another Celestial Expansion star hit is enough to get the kill on Jax as well. So they go actually go four for zero, or four for one in that extended play. And they're gonna get the Cloud Drake off of that as well. Cloud Drake's super nice on the uh, Aurelian Soul just because, again, he's already really fast and good at roaming. And the Cloud Drake is just gonna make that even better because he's going to get that uh, plus 3% movement speed, triple to 9% movement speed when out of combat. So XPL is just gonna be able to fly across the map, right? quite literally fly across the map with this Comet of Legend. But he's going to be able to run to wherever he needs to go on the map and just be able to chase people down pretty much anywhere he wants. So that's a bad giveaway by the enemy team. And when you have a close game like this, giving away Cloud Drakes or really any dragons that are needless giveaways is just not what you want to do because you're giving free stats to the enemy team. I've mentioned this a bunch of times before, but if you just look at one dragon, the Cloud Drake actually has the highest win percentage. It's, it's more correlated with winning the game than any other dragon. The Infernals are better if you stack them, but if you just get one dragon of each type, the Cloud Drake actually has the highest um, added win percentage, if we want to use like a Saber Metrics term. All right, up here, Renekton getting caught out a little bit. Jax is going to jump on him. He's going to pop his ult right here, and they are diving under the tower. So it turns out that's going to be a one for one, and that's pretty good considering the situation that uh, Renekton was in. Going one for one there is not bad. Uh, meanwhile, there's an, a continued fight. Uh, the Zaya is going to pick up a kill on Shaco, but they're going to trade that for a kill on the Soraka, and now there's no protection for Zaya. She's going to use the ultimate and then flash away. Let's see if they're going to be able to chase this down. Meanwhile, Pantheon is here, but he's pretty much alone. There was also a separate kill as the Silas player killed Ezreal, who is 083 on the game and pretty much useless right now. <laughs> So yeah, the fight continues, and now Silas is coming in. There is the Braum passive on him there, so if they can just get one more auto attack. Yeah, there's the stun, and a beautiful Q and a beautiful ultimate coming in from XPL. He's going to pick up one kill. Still got those stars running. He's going to ignite on the Pantheon. He is looking to finish off. There's the Kingslayer coming in from Silas. Can again make him deceptively strong. Gets the stun, and now can he manage to escape from this? Trying to run away. There is the E popped. Apparently he was out of combat long enough to use it. So 3,000 range, hops away over the terrain, Cloud Drake kicks in, and XPL says, see you later, I'm out of this one. So picked up the kill on Zaya, got the big shutdown gold, and now going to be able to look to use that to go back and spend more money. This has been a pretty action intense game, 26 to 20 in kills, so I haven't had much of a chance to talk about things like builds. I will mention the skilling order again. Uh, what XPL did in this game was put a point in all three of his skills right away, and then he maxed his W first, then he maxed Q second because he gets the stun increase, and then he is now maxing E last. E is his one point skill. Of course, scale your ultimate whenever it's available. In terms of his build, he went Rod of Ages first. This seems to be the first four item on Aurelian Soul. He really does need the extra mana and the extra health. 
and then he went into a Rylai's. The slow is really, really nice. And then just went into Morella Namakon for the magic penetration and the general AP. Morella Namakon is super helpful here because the Soraka is in the game and has all that healing. And of course, the Kingslayer on the Silas player also gives him a ton of healing. So Morella Namakon, if I can highlight that here, the Cursed Strike magic damage the champions inflicts them with Grievous Wounds. Really helpful for cutting down on some of that healing. Anyway, we've got another fight up in top lane, so let's watch this. Renekton getting jumped on by both Pantheon and Jax, but the rest of the team is here. It's a nice Brawl ultimate to get the knockup. Ezreal's gonna die, but Ezreal's pretty useless, so who really cares? And now we're gonna see the Q coming out. It manages to hit and get the stun on Zaya, which is what they need. Zaya is so poor to the enemy team's damage, so... A key stun coming out from XPL, he follows it up with the Voice of Light ultimate, and they end up going 4 for 1 in the team fight and getting the big, big kill on Zaya because she's so strong. And so now that is a clear call to go and take Baron. I actually don't agree with Renekton going top lane. Like, yes, he wants to shove this lane, but it, it makes the Baron play a lot riskier to do this. They do not have a Mountain Drake. If they were the team with the Mountain Drake, this would be fine, but it just seems a little bit risky going for this. And in fact, their team's getting awfully low. So, Silas is going to come up here to top lane. I guess it's nice that he's pulling uh, attention away, but, like, look how long this is taking. It would be much easier to take this Baron. Oh, and yeah, there's the Renekton ultimate running. You see the bigger uh, graphical model for Silas and the, the area of effect damage that Renekton ult causes. So, they do get the Baron. They're able to escape from that. And now you see Renekton trying to disengage. Let's see if he's going to be able to make it out of this. He's used both Slice and Dice, so he does make it out at the cost of his Flash. He did get the tower, so not worthless by any means, and they did get the Baron, but I just feel like that was needlessly risky, given that Renekton could have come there, and they would have done the Baron much, much safer. So it worked out, don't get me wrong, and they did get a tower in top lane too, but just, just feels to me like they would have been better off by having Renekton help them with that Baron, and make it much less of a risky play. Alright, so now the fight's continuing, and uh, Red Team over pushing a lot, like Jax is not here, Pantheon is not here, so not the best map positioning from them, look at all that Soraka healing coming in, uh, weren't able to get the Grievous Wounds debuff until after the healing came in, Ezreal is actually going to ult in and help out a fair amount. XPL does have a blue buff, he's continuing to run, he gets off a nice point blank stun right there, so that's going to pop the Guardian Angel once again. They really need to get on top of Zaya, ooh, it's too early on the Braum ultimate, but Braum passive is going to be enough to get another stun, so in this extended fight they're continuing, another nice stun on the Jax, going to land that Q once again, it's a 2 for 2 thus far, yeah, 2 for 2 thus far. And Ezreal, can he actually do something here? Oh my god. So, oh, look at this. We, the Soraka wants the Redemption Aura so badly, but actually dodges back into one of XPL's stars. He's just been running that Celestial Expansion over and over again. It is super nice to have a blue buff on Aurelion, so he's a very blue buff dependent champion because he wants to keep his W running as much as possible, and he is going to run himself out of mana if he doesn't do that. Ezreal actually landing some poke there for the first time, and yeah, actually manages to get something, but now he's going to be jumped on by Jax. Jax going forward. Here comes that star search uh, on the queue, and let's see, is this going to be enough? Yes, they are going to follow that off. Pantheon's jumping into the fight, so let's see what's going to happen here. He's going to hop onto XBL. He's going to get low, but fortunately Unfortunately, XPL is flash up. He's going to get over the wall. Ezreal falls. Meanwhile, Shaco did get a tower. Probably should have been with the team instead of split pushing there. And let's see if XPL can manage to claim another blue buff. He definitely wants this one. Yep, is going to manage to get that one and still get out. Has so much movement speed between all of his abilities plus the Cloud Drake. And now Pantheon's getting caught away from the rest of the team. He gets a kill on the shape on the Shaco, but then it gets traded one for one. And Renekton is now revived. This is just the endless team fight. It just goes on and on and on. And in these extended team fights, it's really nice having Aurelian Soul because he just outputs so much extended damage over time. I haven't gotten a chance to highlight how much damage his W is doing. Note the basically 400 ability power. And those stars, 188 plus 189, so that's about 350 damage from each one of those stars. So, you know, if you keep tanking those stars in the extended fights over and over and over again, it, it adds up to a lot of damage over time. So in these long, long, long team fights, that ends up being a pretty big factor. I, I do think it was a mistake from XPL to recall there, just because the rest of the team wanted to do this uh, Mountain Drake, and with him not being there, it makes it a lot riskier for the enemy team. I think he should have done helped them do the Mountain Drake and then recalled after it, because this makes the the play a little bit uh, a little bit riskier to do this. They are just doing this with Brahm and Renekton, so they don't have a ton of damage here. I guess Renekton has a decent amount. So here comes XPL. He's back, but here comes Pantheon. Here comes Jax, and this is going to be a lot riskier. He needs to get over the wall. Needs to use that. A e to do it, and so they are going to kill Pantheon. Here comes the E over the wall. Manages to get in, lands the stun on the Q, 
And that's going to be enough for them to take that Mountain Drake. But again, yeah, a little bit needlessly risky. Also, Ezreal really should not be the one leading the charge into the enemy team. They need someone tankier to do this. Now, he is going to get the kill on Soraka, so I guess it worked out. But again, kind of risky to do that. And now Shaco is going to try to dive in under the enemy turret. He's going to die. And we're going to see yeah, a little bit overextension. Braum is also going to die. So a little bit of overchasing right there. They do get the Braum passive stun onto the, uh, onto the Silas. And then XPL stars, which again are just continuing to tick damage over and over and over again. That's going to be enough to get the kill. So a very bloody fight. Four for three at XPL's, uh, in the favor of XPL's team. But they do get the tower, and they are going to get the inhibitor, and that's what matters. Zaya, despite being 11-2 on the game, ultimately can't do that much if the entire front line melts in front of her, because she will just die very quickly. And that's a little bit sad for her, because she's having a great game here, but the rest of the team, not so much. And this is where she's probably blaming her teammates for feeding. <laughs> And uh, overall, XPL's team has opened up a pretty decent lead. They had about 5,000 gold. They have equalized the Mountain Drakes, which is pretty important. It'll make it much easier for them to take the next Baron, take the next Dragon. And by getting that inhibitor down, they're going to have the pressure in the mid lane for them to work off of. XPL has also now finished a Leandri's Torment. This is great on, again, damage over time casters. It does the, what is it, the, the burn effect, which... Again, is nice because not with Aurelian Soul not being a burst caster, the burn over time effect just continues to add to the magic damage the stars are doing. And it also adds health too, which which is helpful for Aurelian Soul because he has to be up in the middle of the enemy team. Like he can't stay at long range. He has to be near the enemy team for his stars to do his damage. You need to stack a fair amount of health. So that's the Rod of Ages, the Rylies for the slow, the Leandres for the burn effect. Getting all that additional health really does make it so he doesn't die um, right away in the team fights. And that's, again, part of the reason why you see the build go this way. Right now, Silas has jumped on Ezreal. He is going to Arcane Shift out, has stolen the Ezreal ultimate, so we might get to see that used. Silas does a lot of damage, but he's been off by himself a lot in this game, so can he use the Ezreal ult, gets good damage on Soraka, then the stolen Ezreal ult right back again, but Renekton has gotten into the middle of the team fight here, and that's what they want. XPL is continuing to use damage. There's the Voice of Light ultimate coming out. Renekton's going to get low. His Guardian Angel is going to be popped. Let's see if Jax dies to the Ignite. He does. So Braum gets the kill there. Again, there's no tower back here. Meanwhile, Ezreal dies yet again to Zaya, but there's only so much that Zaya can do now. She's looking to get back into the fight. Silas is here as well, so they're going to get the kill on Braum. But another great Q stun comes out from XPL. He's going to get that kill uh, onto the Silas player. We're going to finish that one off, and now it's back to just Zaya yet again. She's the only one left alive on her team. Here comes the Q coming in. They're going to force the flash out, and look how much damage just one of those W ticks does. <laughs> those stars, again, doing so much damage. Oh, and the Shaco box puts it down with the Guardian Angel revive. And so there's no way for Saya to escape. She's forced to just stand there fleeing like an idiot. And Shaco polishes off that kill. So good stuff overall. The only one up right now is the Soraka. However, Jax is going to respawn in like one second. So there's a limit to what they can get out of this. I think they're just trying to get one of these Nexus turrets. Let's see if they can get it. And it looks like they've got the damage. They do another point blank stun landing from XPL in order to escape from Jax when he was counter striking. And then the E, the, what's this skill called? Comet of Legend gets him out, no problem. Flies the 3,000 distance, or 6,000 distance, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that the uh, distance goes up with more points in the skill. So more movement speed and more distance as you get more points in this. Wow, that's quite nice. The, what is it, 40% bonus movement speed? How fast is he coming out of base right now? He's at, let's see, with all the bonuses, he's at 539 movement speed when out of combat. That's ridiculous. Like, he doesn't have Moby Boots or anything like that. He's just super fast. All right, well, we got another fight. I see Braum initiated that with his ultimate. Now, Shaco's running in from behind. Jax jumping in against Zaya is not here, and that's a real problem for Red Team. They keep engaging these fights with no Zaya, so they, they can't win these fights without their 12-kill Zaya on their side. So that should just give away yet another Baron. We see Ezreal looking to chase... And uh, I don't know why he's off here by himself. That seems needlessly reckless. But in any case, XPL's team is going to claim this. And oh, Pantheon, I, he can't, can't. I don't think he can cancel that ultimate once he's uh, once he's in the middle of the enemy team. So he's going to land too late, and then he's going to die to yet another uh, another tick of the stars orbiting XPL, who goes up to his 17th kill on the match right now. Meanwhile, Ezreal's still pushing this base, looking to get this. But with Baron buff, with a five on two advantage. There's not a lot the enemy team can do, and oh my god, look at the size of this Q coming in. Yeah, again, the, uh, the, the, what is it called? The star search will keep getting bigger until it hits the outer limit, so you can get just le these ridiculously large, uh, star screams if they keep, uh, or star surges, jeez, star scream, 
apparently this is Transformers. The Star Surge will keep getting larger. There's another point blank one landing on the Zaya. And then it's going to finish off a kill onto Jax with the Voice of Light. And we're going to see the exhaust coming out. Good timing there. Silas wants to go in. Renekton's going to walk into the fountain and commit suicide. So that's going to be the end of that one. But the game draws to a close here just before the 35 minute mark with the 19313 for XPL. So a really nice game to demonstrate some of the Aurelian Soul gameplay. I think you got to see a little bit of everything in that game, both the ability to roam, although maybe not quite as much in this game as some of the other ones that I've seen XPL play on Aurelian Soul, but a little bit of roaming using the ultimate, both for the slow and for the disengage, and uh, using some of the nice uses of the Star Surge Q for both point blank immediate stuns and also some of the longer range stuns with the longer duration. And then finally, again, just the, the W on Aurelian Soul, it just deals so much damage. Look at that, it's over 500 damage damage per star right now here in the end game. Now, yeah, he's got 600 ability power. We, we realize it's not going to do that much damage every game, but those stars rotate pretty fast. I mean, if each one's doing 500 damage, then it adds up in a hurry, especially in a chaotic team fight where you're hitting two or three people at a time. So Aurelian Soul, good late game champ, good damage over time champ. If you can master this champ, he gets pretty strong. I didn't even mention the, the Magi Soul Stealer with 25 stacks. Yeah, when uh, XPL finished his build, he stole the Dark Seal, so he just upgraded to the Magi's and, and maxed it out. So <laughs> pretty good. Too bad he couldn't fit a Death Cap in here somewhere. He would have been up to like 900 ability power if he'd gotten a Death Cap in there somewhere. All right, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. A nice carry job from XPL, carrying his bot lane, which went 521 on the game. But uh, hey, sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to man up and put on the carry pants and drag your team to a win. Once again, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Until next time, have a great week. See you guys again soon.